Hello, back again to do another unboxing and review. Today we're going to go into a category that's a little off the um, normal for this channel, but I thought it was interesting enough to take a look. So this category of item I would put in um, personal hygiene and I guess by extension healthcare. And so this item here is designed to safely remove, um, clean and remove earwax from your ear. Now it comes from a company called Q-Twist and uh, you might be thinking, well, we already have implements to clean our ears, and they're very cheap and affordable, and those would be these. All right, so we've all seen these. Uh, cotton swab, or more, um, I guess, popularly known by a particular brand name, and that would be Q-tips. So, yes, and I will admit, I have for decades been cleaning my ears with these, okay? I, that's what when I grew up that's what I was shown how to clean your ears use one of these and I really never thought about uh, is that really the right uh, tool for that I just assumed that these were what they're made for however on a trip to a doctor um, come we were doing the checkup and then talk about you know looking in the ears and anyway and then um, so she asked me how do you clean your ears um, and I said well like kind of with a q-tip like duh and she said yeah well you're not supposed to be using those I'm like what so um, I told her that's always what I've been using and she gave me a real cool little assignment slash challenge she said go back to the store and pick up any box of q-tips or associated brands maybe not q-tips but another cotton swab brand pick up any one of them look on the back of the box and see if anywhere on there it says use this to clean your ears and I thought hmm okay challenge accepted. so okay here I have a, a big old box of q-tips right and then on the back um, yeah I had to rip this open but they kind of give you like little pictures of suggested uses so you have beauty it looks like there she's um, putting on eyeshadow this um, they're cleaning like a baby's toes like between his toes I guess to dry it or something up here we have first aid I don't know apply swabs and stuff those um, yeah ointments and creams and stuff like that and then here this is by the way if you can't see it's a keyboard and so they're telling you, you can use these to clean in between the keys so like electronics and stuff so well she's right not one of these suggested uses is to stick these things in your ear concern um, your eardrum is only about two to three centimeters in from the opening of your ear canal and this by the way is quite a bit longer than two to three centimeters so sticking too much of this q-tip in can go too far and you could rupture your eardrum which is obviously bad so um, having heard the same thing this guy was talking about in the ad and I heard that from my doctor I thought well maybe there is some and maybe this guy actually has a point so I decided to go ahead and order it um, clicked on the ad and it took me to Q2S website and I normally don't go into prices of items because usually I'm importing them and as you know who you know and where you get it from can make all the difference about how much you pay but since I ordered this from a more I guess quote quote mainstream source ie YouTube video ad I'll just go and tell you um, I paid on the Q-Twist website $44 to have this shipped to me okay so um, let's go ahead and take a look around the packaging Okay, so um, first, this did not come in a retail package, which you're seeing here is exactly how it fell out of the mailer when I opened it up. Okay, now we have, we're agreed with find back, um, and we'll get to that in a bit. I'm just going to go over in case you haven't already figured out how this thing kind of works. Again, we're going to get to it more later, but just so you know what you're looking at here. Here is the main handle, the and these little corkscrew tips uh, adhere to the top. And then you put it in your ear and you turn this in the direction the arrow is indicating. So you turn it like that, right? And apparently what happens is the wax in your ear will get trapped in these little threads on the screw. And as you turn it the correct direction, um, the earwax will be basically um, kind of uh, <laughs> spiral staircased out of your ear by following on these little treads, uh, uh, threads of the screw. Okay, um, so anyway, that's how it basically works. But anyways, let's go ahead and... Um, now we see find back. I'm not really sure um, what find back is, if this is actually the brand, because um, I'm looking at this whole thing, I don't see Q Twist anywhere. I haven't opened it up, but usually you shouldn't have to open up an item to see the company's name on the item of interest. So we have a whole bunch of limited, uh, okay, legal stuff there, made in China, on um, the back, there, find back again, find back. I don't know exactly what find back is supposed to mean. Uh, find the earwax that was in your ear when it comes back out by using the screw device. I don't know, maybe that's whatever. You have a better idea? Let me know. Okay, so I'm trying to wonder now, and not seeing Q-Twist anywhere, maybe Fineback is the brand. 
And that's what I thought until I saw this. Let me turn this here. There you go. See that? Q-L-L-I-P-I-N. Culipin. So I looked up Culipin, and by the way, that thing is trademarked. So Okay, so I looked up Culipin, and the only thing I was able to find was essentially some cheap-looking juicers. Yes, yeah, stick a whole bunch of vegetables in this, like, or fruits into this tube, and it blends them up, and then you drink it like a smoothie, right? Okay, so I'm assuming now, because evidently th these guys make something else other than just this, that this is the manufacturer, and this might be the particular um, tool or model number that we're looking at here, right? Uh, before we get to the unboxing, which would be or unboxing, if you can even call it that, or opening up the bag, at this point, I'm thinking, wait a minute, I'm sure I've seen this before. This looks way too familiar with the colors, the shapes, these little attachments. So I did a little more digging and ooh, doo, 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 doo. oh my head, look at that. So this here is something I ordered. I had this imported. And if we look, there are a lot of similarities here. Um, and yeah, you'll notice no, no, no writing here, no writing there. No writing on the base of the handle, All right? So, oh, and then look at those. Those look kind of familiar, don't they? And if you look at it side by side, and of course we're gonna open them up, but it seems that, except for Feinbach written here, these instructions are even the same. So, um, we'll have to give back and look at this one here. Um, but before we go look at this, I just wanted to show you, because you'll kind of understand why when we're going through this, I'm looking at every little detail, because it will be compared to this. Um, so anyway, so let's get back to the Q-Twist um, version, if this is actually their product, or the product that was sent to me when I gave Q-Twist money. How does that sound? Okay, so let's go ahead and um, um, open this thing up. Okay, so open it up. It's only held um, to closed by some mild adhesive here on a fold over flat. Again, there's supposed to be 16 of these little um, these. Okay, so we have, let's look at the instructions first. Okay, there they are. Um, it seems that there's this warnings it should not be used without physicians. So it's all basically caution type deal. Please read all instructions thoroughly before using. Okay, so we get some diagrams. Yeah. Okay. And all right. So let's look at the. Here's the handle. This um. It's all. This is all plastic. It feels to. be be it's very light um, looking down the middle well that explains that it's all the way hollow down the shaft there and we'll pull look at one of these tips all right so here's one of those uh, screw tips um, the top so the very top here for most of the screw it's this uh, silicone um, yeah and it's there's a lot of give it does retain its shape if I squeeze it you can see it springs right back, so that's good. And um, now the base here is made out of so this the disc, see the disc, and the little attachment feet. Those are all made out of a regular hard plastic. There's a little bit of that hard plastic that goes into the base of the screw, but that stops. I mean, just right above the circle. So all the stuff that's going to go in your ear is pretty much silicone, right? Okay. And the tip, um, if I just push it real lightly, yeah, it doesn't take much to deform it, as you can see there. So, um, should you go a little too far, it looks like there's quite a bit of give, and it can roll back on itself. So, yeah, you shouldn't stab yourself with it. Okay, now uh, let's go ahead and back to the handle here. All right, so you're looking at the top of the handle here. Again, the arrows indicate how you should be turning it, in what direction. You can see there um, the attachment points pretty well. Um, there's no, um, what do you call it, rough. It looks like it's been all pretty much molded and cleaned up, which is good because any, you know, any extra plastics there could make the attachment not as tight. So I just got one of these tips here, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, put it, attach it on. Just 
see how that goes. Okay, well there you are. Yep, so it attaches well, and uh, I'm just lightly pulling them apart. Yeah, that's not enough, so it shouldn't accidentally come off. It looks like we're going to have to exert a little effort to separate them, which in this case is a good thing. So separate it. I see there's a little gap there. Maybe I'll put my fingernail in there. Thumbnail. And then on the other side. Okay, well, there, there we go. So yes, you do have to make a concerted effort to get it off, again, which is good. So, okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and read the instructions um, real quick, just to see if there's anything I need to know, and we'll be All right, I read the directions real quick. Um, nothing really um, that we couldn't have figured out on our own, but it did say if you want to get the tips off, they had a picture where you're supposed to push in with your thumb on this, this side here, and then use your finger to push in on this side here and they show like you're supposed to be able to squeeze and push out and this tip is supposed to um, separate from the handle. Now that only, to, from what I can tell, at least with the one I got, it only um, seems to move it far enough away for you to get your fingernail in there and then um, remove it like I did before. I'm not sure, maybe yours might actually have it where you can just pop them off with just using one hand, but at least for mine it seems to be a two-hand affair. Okay, now um, the other thing. Um, one of the panels in there um, showed that um, there was like a, supposed to be like a hard case where you could store all these tips and they were all uh, lined up with this part facing up so that when you wanted a new tip you could just get the handle and stick it in, lock it in place and then pull it out and then you'd be good to go. However, I did not get um, that hard case storage speed loader type deal so I'm not sure. Maybe that's uh, the extra kit or whatever but anyway at least when you order it from Qtwist you don't get seem to get that little storage case box only uh, this <laughs> okay all right so I went ahead and tested it out um, I decided to hold up the Q-tip uh, next to it to give you a kind of a size comparison okay anyway so um, all right so first when you use this it does actually feel different than this all right the Q-tip so um, the first part that you're going to have to get used to is you have to really, you see the base of the, of the end of the handle where the handle connects to the screw part? You have to get this, um, I guess, um, disc part. You have to get this essentially jammed in your ear to where this is at the entrance of your ear canal. Now, I, at first I wasn't doing that, so then only a very small portion of this was actually in my ear canal. Again, that's not going to help. You start, I give it, and start turning it. And um, initially, I thought that these little um, these little um, threads here were going to be kind of like a nice little wave massage on the inner uh, on the inside of my ear canal. Well, actually, I didn't really feel them. Um, the only th reason I knew that this thing was turning was because I could feel this uh, disc part or the end of the handle turning against the outside of my ear canal. So now, uh, this tip that you're seeing here is the same tip I just used. And um, yes, you can see it's rather presentable, right? No earwax, no hair, nothing gross on there. Okay, um, that's because I actually cleaned my ear um, using a Q-tip earlier in the day, so my ears were clean. But since I don't keep earwax packed in my ear, because I think that's gross, um, I can't really give you a test to see, you know, just how much wax can it move out per revolution. I am not sure. So it doesn't hurt. You don't necessarily feel the threads moving and you gotta really kinda get this close up to the side of your head in order for this to work. So, okay, um, now that we kinda went over that, let's get back to the other um, one, the one I imported, and let's compare. All right, so I opened up the other um, one, and I just wanted to show you the manuals and compare them real quick. So, um, putting them edge to edge, the fine back slash Q-twist whatever book is a little smaller than this one here. Now, as far as what's written on the pages, it's all but the same for except for a few minor differences. Um, this is probably the most obvious difference is that fine back's written up on this one, is where this this whole thing's just left empty. A lot of space, I guess. Maybe you could put your own brand there. Just okay, just saying. And then down here, um, you notice that the picture in there is the same. Now going to actual text differences other than that fine back title, you can see here this is the first page. You notice the fine back or slash Q twist, whatever book is um, printing is darker, which makes the diagram there a lot easier to see. Um, this one here on the right. 
but again, the, the figure A is the same on both. Notice here um, on the one I imported, it just says remove handle. Over here, it says remove find back handle. So uh, everything else is the same, except on the very back, you can see we have the legal stuff, and then on the find back one, we have made in China. As where this one does not have that. So for all practical purposes, these are the same manual. Now let's actually get to the handle. Okay, we have the handles side by side here. On the right we have the fine back. On this one is the other one. So with the length, they're almost, almost the same. This one here on the left is a little bit longer, but not by much. Also notice the oval, where I guess you'd put your brand or whatever you want to write in that oval. If you notice on the fine back one, it that ovals back slightly more. And this one here is a little further towards the front. But again, no functional difference. Um, very, very, very minor cosmetic difference. Notice the arrows, the colors, everything else is the same. The way the, um, the design is the same, the coloring. Now, um, over here on the tops, the fine back one and this one, at least looking from this viewpoint, they are, now you can see this one has some of that color coming up. But the edges or um, the sides here are the same. It's just these look a little smaller because they have some blue up here as where these are all white. But if you do it like so, put them together, okay, you can see they match up flush. So, all right. And, um, this one here, of course, has that uh, Cula pen. This one has nothing written down there. But again, a lot of open space to maybe write your own, draw your own, whatever, print your own. Um, okay, and then inside we have the same hollow. Um, this one seems to have a little orange tinge in there. I'm not sure what's going on with that. That is not the door back there. It really does have some brown pigment there at the bottom as where this one looks to be a little more well, clean. I don't know. Um, okay, then let's look at probably the most important thing is the connection point where the tips are going to lock into. All right, if you can see here where the tips lock in, there is a little structural difference here. I mean, it's the same principle, but the one on the right, the fine back, has, I would say, a, night, a neater. Um, you see those little pegs. So, of course, the one on the right we're talking about, you see how it has those little crowns with those little dimples pointing up. As were this one that I had imported, it just seems to have a more open, um, and then there's this little uh, slot as where this doesn't have a slot. So this one seems to be more like positive space, and this one seems to be on the left more negative space. So let's see how that works with um, the attaching the tips. All right, so I just went ahead and attached the tips on both. Um, it, again, they both kind of snap on in the same manner. There's not a lot of difference between them. Uh, the fine back one does seem to have a little better of a connection feel just because there's more um, plastic in the handle where it connects as opposed to this one where it had more open space. So this one's a little more of a click clacky and this one's a little bit more of a tick type sound. So you will notice this one here does not have this little dimple that this one does. Although to be honest, um, that dimple thing that really doesn't help you to remove the tip. So this one not having it really doesn't mean that much. Now uh, let's go ahead and compare the um, screw tips. All right, so there are the two different ones. Again, fine back is on the right, and the other is on the left. So um, you can see the huge amount of similarity between these, and um, you really have to nitpick to see the difference. It's for color-wise, it's probably so um, slight of a difference you probably aren't even able to see it on camera. However, the one on the right has ever so slightly more of a see-through, as where the one on the left is just you know, matte white, but the one on the right has a very, like, it's still, you can't see through it, but you can tell it's a little bit more transparent. Now, um, on the connection portion at the bottom, the fine backs, those little two, if you look at the middle part where it connects, you can see that those two slots are not quite as pronounced as the one on the left, but, yeah, for any major structural difference here, they're the same. I mean, all right, so now that we have the chance to study these up close, I think we can all be safe in the assertion that these are, in effect, the same darn thing. Okay, now you may be thinking, well, hey, this fine back one or whatever it's called, uh, made by Culepin, 
maybe this one's the real deal and this is the knockoff, right? And I understand, especially coming from this part of the rural, that would be some a good assumption. However, we have to understand the whole idea behind knockoffs. It's to essentially make something, pass it off as something that's superior and, you know, make money. Or give someone the chance to pretend they have something that's uh, higher value than it really is. So, just think, knockoff iPhone, knockoff Louis Vuitton bag, you get the point. But now, let's look at what we're dealing with here. This one is not made any better than this one. Um, in any little difference between them, I think we can just attribute to batch. Um, they painted the circle a little higher in this batch than they did over here, but it's the same thing, right? So that's why I don't think this here is the real and this is a knockoff. I'm under the impression with all the clues I've been given that these are white label items. And this one we just got a little later where someone got the chance to put their name on it. And this one here is still waiting for that um, person to slap their name on here and make some profit. Hey, did I just say profit? Let's talk about the profit that Q-Twist made off of me. Okay, so I earlier in the video I told you how this shipped to my door came out to be $44. This one here shipped to my door with $7.87. So, that's right, this one here is priced five times higher than this one. Uh, do you see five times the value here? I definitely do not. So, this is a white label item, and uh, so please do not pay $44 for this. You're getting ripped off. But, now let's say you get it for a more reasonable price, like $7.87, and you get this one. Is this worth $7.87 as far as cleaning your ears? If you have a lot of wax buildup, I'd say yes, go for it. If you have perhaps a younger a kid who isn't, I uh, will say, very um, <laughs> calm when they clean their ears and you don't want them to accidentally puncture their eardrum, I would say this is a good um, alternative to a Q-tip. However, if you're like me and you really want to get in there to you know, soak up that extra water that's in your ear after a shower, this obviously isn't going to work as well as a Q-tip. So... I think a Q-tip gives you uh, more reach inside, but then you have to weigh that with the risk. So it depends on you. It's user preference, I suppose, but this is the safer option.